Hi everybody, this is Phil and Greg with Rio Grande's Tech Support Department and we teach the casting class over here at Rio Grande. Today we're going to give you a, a quick demo on some of the stuff that we do in the casting class. We're going to do a, a quick demo on the Naycraft Spin Caster and then we'll go over and do a, another flask on the Vic 9 Caster. Right. The, the reason I like this caster for a small shop is you can bolt it down. Uh, if it's in the way, you can then take it off, mount it up on the wall, just hang it from one of the holes in the, in the uh, base and put it up on the wall, get it out of the way, bring it down, clamp it down when you're ready to cast. I like this particular caster because the entire tub spins. So with that, it's much, much, much safer than the kind with a stationary tub and just the broken arm spinning. If the broken arm is spinning and you have an overfill in metal, that metal comes flinging out, hits the side of the tub, and can spray across the room. This one, because the, the whole tub is spinning at the same rate as the molten metal, if the metal overfills or, or doesn't fill properly and it spills out, it pours down into the tub and it's collected there, but it doesn't go spraying across the room. So I really like this machine for that reason. So to use this machine, we pour the metal in, and we've already poured the metal in but then we wind it up, and we wind it up three spins. And then we lock this in place and see how it catches. And then when I'm ready to release it to cast, I just pull the tub and that releases the handle like that. So I like that. Then we cock the thing. And what that does is that gets the arm ready to fling the metal into the flask. So Greg's going to grab a flask out of the oven. We've already burned these out overnight. And we are going to be ready to cast. So these are already at our cast temperature. Which is about 1,000 degrees. They've been holding there for a little while. So you're doing number three, correct? Doing number three. Okay, so I'm gonna look for flask number three. We've got a couple more in here, so we don't wanna mix those up. This is number three, that's good. So if you look here, there are some uh, depressions that are, that are that will fit several different size flasks, and we wanna set this so that it's locked into the correct depression. So we just want to center it, and then the crucible will center with the hole in the flask. So we're ready to go there. Is that right? Yep. It looks a little high. Nope. Is that we're, okay? in, we're in good shape. All right. Okay. So everything's locked in place. So now I, I light the torch, and I'm going to light the gas first. Then I'm going to add oxygen. And I want, to, I want to get rid of that little bit of yellow in the flame. But I don't want this real hissy flame because that adds too much oxygen. So I've got the flame on the metal. And now from this point on, I don't want to remove the flame from the metal. You also want to wear safety glasses because Number one, it protects your eyes, and that metal gets really, really bright. And so it's kind of like staring into the sun when you do that. Um, the, the safety glasses are going to make it comfortable for you to cast. So the metal, what we're going to do is just hold this on the metal until the metal starts to get mushy. The metal will then kind of stick together, and from that point, it'll start to melt. And we want to make sure that the metal is fully molten before we go ahead and release the, the flask. When we're going to release the flask, we want to make sure that we pull back both our hand and the torch so, so this knob that we wound it with doesn't hit our hand and it doesn't hit the torch. I'm not saying it's ever happened to me, but it hurts like heck. So um, just make sure that you get that out of the way. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little pinch of our flux 
and I've got my casting flux, and I, I'm just going to put a little pinch on the metal, and that cleans any oxides from the metal. So we're pretty much ready to roll on this. So now what I'm going to do with one hand, I'm going to pull the tub, release the lock, and then I'm going to let it go. So our metal is ready to ready to be cast into the flask. So here we go. And that's just the centrifugal motion pushing the metal into the cavities of the flask. And with that metal being pushed in there, it's kind of like a a ride at the carnival or at the state fair where you stand against the wall and then they strap you in and then they it starts spinning and spinning faster and faster and then they drop the the bottom out from under you well that force is what's pushing the metal into the flask so it can't really help but go in the right place and it also pushes it in there with enough force to fill all the cavities. And I love the way this fills. It's going to fill the finest detail. So what we'll do is we'll let this continue spinning. As soon as that stops spinning, we'll take it over to the, uh, the cooling area and we'll put a, a carbon uh, um, block on top of it, a little charcoal block on the button. And that helps it eat some of the oxygen from the piece because it's still absorbing oxygen and oxidizing the surface. So at this point the metal is fully cast into the flask and then we have to wait oh, approximately 10 to 15 minutes for the metal to cool and fully solidify. At this point in time the metal is still a little bit mushy and it's still crystallizing inside so we don't want to immediately quench. Now if you look in here there's no metal in here but when we pull this back all our metal is in the button and that's what we're looking for. So that, that means everything went inside the flask. So now we'll take it over to the cooling area. We'll just set it down here and we'll put our block on and we'll start a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, got that going. So now let's talk about this other machine. This is a vacuum caster. Uh, this is the Vic 9. It's a great machine because you can do uh, a couple of different things with it. This is number four. Okay. Uh, this, on this side, generally there's a, uh, a bell jar, and this is where we do our uh, bell jars over there. But this is where we do our uh, investing, which is really? which is a necessary step in casting. This is where we fill uh, the. This is where we fill the the flask with investment, and you have to vacuum. So we put our, we, first we put our mixing bowl with our investment under here. We remove the air from the mixed investment. After a few minutes, then we remove the bell jar, we take the mixing bowl out, we pour that into the flask, and then we remove the air from the flask also. So it's, it's making sure that that investment is in all, all the nooks and crannies and tight around your, your models. Um, once we take all the air out for the required period of time and all those mixing instructions are in your investment, uh, packages and there's also great in instructions on how to mix the investment up online at different websites like Kerr or R and R. They have complete mixing instructions, so you follow those to the letter. Um, then you let the flask sit and dry, and that helps cure the investment a little bit. So once we do that, then it's going to go into our oven. We burn it out. And then we're going to remove the, the bell jar. And I usually remove the bell jar, and I remove the rubber pad. And now this turns into our casting table. So I've got a uh, Silcor board or a solderite pad works fine. And we've got a melting dish and handle. And this is a great setup, super easy to use. Um, 
and all you're going to do is pour the metal into the crucible and you're going to melt it and now this is going to become your ladle to pour the metal into the flask. So this one, um, we're going to, let's see, after, after we melt the metal, we're going to turn it from invest, which is our bell jar side, to our cast side, which turns the vacuum on on this side. And this is a high heat silicone pad that seals the flask down onto the machine. And then it's drawing the vacuum through the flask and it's pulling the metal down into all the nooks and crannies. But you can see by the flask that, I mean by the pad here, that it's been burned in a few times. Uh, anyway, let's check the, let's make sure the pump is working. I'm just gonna flip it over to this side. And you can see right now there's there's only a little bit of pressure, but when I when I close it off, it goes up to around 25 or so. That's what we're looking for. So we tested it. It's a good idea to start testing it before you start adding heat. <clears throat> so now, uh, before we start melting this, let me grab flask number, that was four. Number four. All right, let me grab flask number four. Now this one, the bottom side is where we're gonna set it onto the onto the vacuum pad. The top side is where we're gonna be pouring. So flip, I wanna- Flip it over just a second. So one thing you wanna do when you're doing vacuum casting, if you notice there's a little bit of a lip there, we didn't fill that flask all the way. And that creates a bigger air pocket instead of just that little half inch hole. It's drawing a vacuum, vacuum from the entire bottom of the flask. So I like that it's gonna seat better. We also wanna make sure that we don't have any investment on this rim. You wanna clean that. Before we put yeah, it Yeah, we down. wanna clean this metal edge. That way it'll give it a good bite into the... And then we'll just test this real quick. So we'll turn it on and we can see we're pulling a vacuum. So we're gonna pull that off. And we're not gonna continue to draw cold room air through the flask while we're heating our metal because it may be one or two minutes of just sucking room air into the flask. So it's gonna crash cool the center of the flask. So this one we're gonna have Greg cast. Let me do this. So let's turn on the gas first. More gas. More gas. There you go. All right. We're going to add some oxygen. Just like before. Uh, that's pretty good. Maybe I need more. Or... That's pretty good. Do we have some flux? Yep, the flux. So the brakes can start melting the metal. Now the nice thing about this is you don't have to, with this setup, you don't have to hold the, uh, the melting dish and handle the whole time. So you don't have to have it in your hand and keep swirling it around. You can just have it sitting there. Which is, which is a little more comfortable because it can get a little heavy. Um, so if you have the, the high heat pad on the machine like this, it, it's okay to have one hand free until you're ready to uh, start pulling. And if you're gonna cast by yourself <clears throat> as a one person operation, you would go ahead and grab the flask out and do it just like we're doing it now. So we're demonstrating how you would do it by yourself. If you had two people, you could start heating, one person could start heating the metal like I'm doing, and then the other person, uh, once the metal started getting close to melting, could grab the flask and then come over and make sure it's uh, it's seated and pulling a vacuum and all that. But since, uh, since I know a lot of people work by themselves, this is great to show how you would do it if as a one man or a one person operation. So there's a little more metal here in this one. It's taking a little bit longer. You can see. 
still see it's got granules in there. It hasn't quite melted yet. When I'm heating too, I'm gonna try to keep the flame. I'm gonna try to keep the flame covering the entire area so that way oxygen doesn't get in there and cause it to uh, oxidize the metal. This is kind of like the Jeopardy thing. You, you want to, you know, you can sing a little song while you're you're waiting for the metal to melt, but you just want to kind of hold it steady on there and move it around a little bit so you're sure you get all the metal, and and just be sure that you're heating everything nice and evenly. Um, this is probably twice as much metal as we had before, so it is taking a little bit longer to melt, um, but should should be just about there and the metal's starting to get kind of slushy at this point starting to stick together so we're seeing all those little granular granules stick together and you can kind of see the surface starting to get shiny and it's just about to go into a puddle so at this point we may drop a little bit of flux on there while he's heating and that just kind of helps remove some of those oxides from the metal. And this is the Matt's casting flux, which is, um, which is great. It's item 704115. Has a little boric acid powder and a little borax in it. It's getting close, but yeah, go ahead and turn a little bit more. Give me a little more oxygen. It's a, it's almost there. Go ahead. Okay. So now he can he can also swirl it around just a little bit, just to make sure that the metal is fully molten. Okay, now it's ready to pour, so we're going to turn our vacuum on. And we can see that we've got a vacuum over here, so now he's ready to pour that metal. Ready? Here we go. And this is the inside part. And you want just one nice, even, smooth pour. You don't want to stop in between, otherwise you may have breaks in the casting. You're going to hold the the flame on the button for another 20 seconds or so and that makes sure that the button is the last thing that freezes on this so now what we're going to do is we're going to watch that button cool and once the once the temperature go um, you're going to see the temperature change on it and that color starts to go away on that button then we can turn the vacuum off when that button is still red, that metal is still moving a little bit, and so we don't want to mess with this. We want that vacuum to continue to pull and draw the metal into the, all the nooks and crannies. So now we can see that button is starting to change color a little bit, and we're starting to lose some of, the, some of that brightness to the metal and it's starting to go a little bit dull in color. We're gonna keep it on until it kind of goes to a gray color. And so it's starting to, the color's starting to fade away a little bit. So if, if you wanna catch this and you notice that it's still a little bit um, glowing, but the color, it's gonna go more down to a dull red. Yeah, we wanna be like a dull red to a, to a dull gray and at this time now we can just turn it off and it's ready to go so we'll take that over to the cooling uh, rack and in the meantime our um, our timer went off 
So I'll put this on this one. And the other one that we cast with the spin caster is Can ready to that? quench. So for the quenching, what we want to do is we want to grab that and we want to go down into the bucket. We want to hold it down below the water. So, and we don't want to lift it up because then we'll get investment blowing up into the air. We want to go straight under, keep it underwater. One, you want to have one deliberate motion. So we're going to do it like this, ready? And then you can swish it around a little bit and that, that heat from that uh, flask is going to break apart that investment. It's a little cool, but. You want to start a timer for the other one? You want to start it for about nine. So okay. that's going to be pretty cool, but I don't know that it's... That one's not quite... Okay, so this one... Let's see, we let it cool a little long. So what we can do to break it out is just tap on this. Sometimes I'll get a, um, a ring mandrel and tap. And that usually breaks it out. Let's see, a little, there we go. There we go. And you can see our, it's still a little warm in there, but we'll break it. And you can still hear how hot that flask is inside. So I'm gonna leave it underwater for a second and continue to break it out. There it goes. There it goes. So all our investment is gone. And now we'll just fish around in here and see if we can find our pieces. you don't want to you don't want to have it come out of the water because the steam has uh, silica in it and you will be breathing that so at this uh, let me find a little with brush. this one here's our piece this was a, uh, a little horse little horse we can kind of scrub that up a little bit So this is, this is ready to be cleaned up a little bit more, break away more of the uh, investment, and then it can go into the ultrasonic or a pressure washer or pressure blaster, clean it off. Pin finisher will get in there. But you can see the too. detail on that. that. That turned out really nice. And we got all the detail in the, in the horse's legs and in the mane. So I'd say that one is definitely a success. And that one's ready to rock and roll. So we're in good shape on that one. So yeah, looks good, Phil. So that was a nice cast on that. The other one, we've got about four minutes left. And um, then we'll go ahead and uh, quench that one as well and see what we see what we have in the next flask. Um, one thing you really want to make sure of when you're mixing your investment is to wear safety gear. You want to wear a respirator when you're doing that. When you're quenching, um, it's not a bad idea to have some kind of eye protection because there's hot splattering stuff going on. Um, my glasses should be fine. Um, otherwise, you want to use uh, some, some good safety glasses just to protect your eyes. Any kind of safety glasses that cover your eyes are going to be fine for this. Um, and, and again, follow the manufacturer's instructions for the mixing of the investment because it's really important. I use an analogy of mixing brownies. I love brownies. You can tell I love brownies just by looking at me. Um, but when I 
pick up a package of Duncan Hines brownie mix at the grocery store, you know, and it says add two eggs and a quarter cup of oil and a half a cup of water and mix it up and pour it into a, a pan. You don't add three eggs and because you like extra moist brownies, add a cup and a half of oil because when you're done, you're going to have a mess. You're not going to have good brownies. And then you're going to call up Duncan Hines and go, oh, these brownies are horrible. You know, they really messed up. And they're going to say, well, what'd you do? Well, I like moist brownies, so I added extra. You don't, you don't add extra water. You don't add extra investment to, to this. It's, it's, there's a science to it. And if you follow the directions, you're going to have good results. If you don't have, follow the directions, then you're going to, you know, garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. So you really don't want to go there. Um, Cast, casting in general is a series of steps that build on each other. So you have to do each one correctly, and that means following the recommended uh, mixing instructions for the investment, the burnout, the casting, the flask temp, the metal temps. It's all important, and it all builds on itself to have a successful result. So just following all those steps, there's a reason those steps are put in place, and that's so you follow them. And if you want to have successful castings, you're going to follow them. You're going to have better surface qualities. You're going to have um, good results every time. If you don't follow the, the steps, I have a lot of people that call us up at, at Tech, and they say, oh, I've been doing it this way for forever, and I just mix it up so it looks like pancake batter. Well, do you like thick pancakes or thin pancakes? I don't know. Did you follow the directions? So, you know, they have water powder ratios, and there's a reason for those water powder ratios to make sure that you have the right amount of water to the right amount of powder. And if you don't, then you're going to have problems with your castings, and you can have failures. And those failures end up costing you money over time. And, you know, having to recast a piece that you, let's say you had a custom carving of a wax and it took you three or four hours or even a day to carve that and to have a failure on that is just not acceptable because then you have to go back and do it again. If you're doing 3D printed models, it still takes time to do that and time is money. So we're trying to save you money, we're trying to save you time, do it right, follow the directions. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and quench this other one. So we're we're within about 20 seconds. And you'll see what happens of our timer. So we're in good shape. You'll see what happens when you don't have to bang this one out. You can hear it's a little bit louder. See what we got. So this one turned out pretty good also. We've got There's a ring and a pendant. Looks like a ring and a pendant. We'll just knock some of the majority of that uh, investment out of the way. Give it a swish. Looks like we had a little bit of, uh, looks like everything turned out really well. So there's our ring. So casting shouldn't be alien to you. <laughs> Take a class, read a book. Um, Take another class, read another book, you know, follow the directions at least, and you're going to have really good results. So this one, we've got a, a swordfish. You can see the detail in there. Um, so I think we're going to call these a success. So Yeah, we got two different processes and two great castings. And both of them turned out really nicely. So thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry about the uh, issues on the live feed, but I think this is going to show you the processes. Um, 
and ask us questions. Be sure to send us any uh, feedback and we'll try and help you out any way we can. We're always here to help. So thanks and uh, uh, be sure to, to follow us on, uh, on Periscope next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.